We had a stealthy solar storm along with some fast wind that gave us a roar all over the world. And over the next two weeks, we have two more chances for some solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. Although the sun has been quieting down in terms of flares, we're still getting a lot of activity. We keep getting little wispy mini solar storms that are launched, and when they're launched next to coronal holes like this one here, we get fast wind on top of that. And that's what has happened just recently. We've managed to get a nice solar storm that was actually bigger than anticipated, and these types of things will continue. We have some new active regions that are coming around with some new coronal holes that are going to be entering the Earth strike zone in probably about a week, and then we've got even more stuff on the backside. So you you amateur uh, aurora photographers, get ready because it looks like we have more chances for aurora. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we really are still pretty flatline when it comes to flares. We are popping a few C-class flares here and there, but there's just not a lot of activity and no active regions that are doing anything other than sleeping. So you amateur radio operators, you should be pretty happy here because we aren't going to have any radio blackouts, but we do need enough light to be able to keep that solar flux up so that you guys can enjoy your radio propagation. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see we've been quiet for quite some time. We did have a little pocket of fast wind that bumped us up in activity back on the 21st, but then it quieted down, and then bam, we get hit by this stealthy solar storm that's followed up by some fast wind that's managed to give us some aurora, beautiful aurora all over the world. And this stealthy solar storm hit hard with some sustained southward fields that gave us some gorgeous aurora, especially across the pond. We had beautiful views in Estonia and in Finland, Sweden, we had some gorgeous views all over Denmark and the Netherlands. We had views in Norfolk, in the UK, in Sunder Sunderland, England. We had Ireland, all over Ireland, and views in Iceland. Now across the pond we had gorgeous views in Saskatchewan when it wasn't too cloudy, and some in Alberta, and then down in the United States, we saw views in Maine and Massachusetts and even in Wisconsin. And even though the storm was dying out, we still got views in Tasmania for the Southern Lights. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor, which reminds me, we just got Stereo B back. We've managed to communicate with it and reestablish contact after 22 months of total silence. It moved finally far enough away from the sun's radio noise that we could reestablish contact and start talking to it again. The scientists, the whole team is busy trying to reboot Stereo and get it back operational and keep it safe so that we don't lose it again. And we'll finally have both of our eyes back. Isn't that fantastic? We're, we're so excited. So congratulations to the entire stereo team. So now going back to stereo A, this is, this is the backside of the sun that we're looking at. Here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the backside. Now if you can see this big coronal hole that you can see right there, that is the coronal hole that I'm talking about that will actually be in the Earth strike zone in about two weeks. So that's going to give us a chance for some extra solar storms as well as one that's already on the front side of the sun that is going to give us another chance in about a week. So we've got about half a month here of really fun times ahead. Returning to the disk, you can see there's really not a lot of activity going on. Region 2578 is about to rotate off of the uh, west limb, and we have a little bit of activity coming on the east limb, but not a lot. So you amateur radio operators, although we won't be seeing any uh, radio blackouts anytime soon, we barely have enough flux, solar flux, to keep uh, propagation at, at decent levels. So expect the the uh, propagation to be kind of marginal this week, especially when these solar storms hit from the fast wind. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we have passed through that solar storm and are now in some fast wind that is beginning to wane. We're only expecting pretty much unsettled conditions at this point, but NOAA's giving us about a 15 to 20 percent chance of a minor storm at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, they're only expecting maybe about a 10 to 15 percent chance of active conditions, and that should continue for the next couple of days. And then things, as we get to the next week, things might begin to ramp up again as we get to the fast wind from that other coronal hole that was just been rotating into Earth view. So that's going to be exciting. And then after that, and the week following, we should have yet another chance as yet another uh, coronal hole with some more fast wind blows through the Earth strike zone.
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, as far as flare is concerned, pretty much everything is in the green. We only have three uh, active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and they're pretty much all sleeping. We have region 2579 and 2581 that are still popping off, maybe a C-class flare here and there, but there's really no threat for some M-class flares. The big problem is in the solar flux levels. They are really low, as you can see, all that's in the yellow. We're having marginal propagation on the amateur radio band and this is going to continue through the foreseeable future as we are beginning to slow down towards solar minimum. So the space weather this week has been pretty exciting. We've had a stealthy solar storm that has given us some gorgeous aurora all over the world, and we're not quite done yet. We're now in the fast wind that's kind of giving us a chance for pulsating aurora and maybe even a proton arc here and there. So your aurora photographers should be pretty happy. Your amateur radio operators, things should be getting a little bit better now. I know it's been kind of tough the last day or so, but things will be quiet for probably about a week, and then we'll get another chance for some solar storms, and then things will quiet down, and then a week after that, yet another another chance because of these fast wind that comes from these coronal holes. So you amateur radio ops, you get kind of, if you know when to, to get on the bands, then you're good, but just have to deal with some of these solar storms. Your roar photographers, you better keep your shutter finger loose because it might be a really cool couple of weeks. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.